Alleluia. Christ is risen. Lord is risen indeed. If you will stand and join with, join with us in singing hymn 98 for our processional hymn. The Lord be with you. And with my spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Almighty Lord and everlasting God, vouchsafe we beseech thee to direct, sanctify, and govern both our hearts and bodies in the ways of thy laws 
and in the works of thy commandments, that through the most mighty protection, both here and ever, we may be preserved in body and soul, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with spirit. Let us pray. Almighty Father, who has given an only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification, grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness that we may always serve thee in pureness of living and truth. Through the merits of the same, thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. In place of our Old Testament lesson today is written the fifth chapter of the book of Acts, beginning in the 12th verse. How many signs and wonders were regularly done among the people by the hands of the apostles? And they were all together in Solomon's portico. But the high priest rose up, and all who were with him, that is the party of the Sadducees, and filled with jealousy. They, they arrested the, the apostles and put them in public prison. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out and said, Go and stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of this life. And when they heard this, they entered the temple at daybreak and began to teach. Now when the high priest came and those who were with him, they called, they called together the council, all the senate of the people of Israel, and sent to the prison to have them brought. But when the officers came, they did not find them in the prison. So they returned and reported, We found the prison securely locked and the guards standing at the doors, but when we opened them, we found no one inside. Now when the captain of the temple and the chief priests heard these words, they were greatly perplexed about them, wondering what this would come to. And someone came and told them, Look, the men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then the captain with the officers went and brought them, not by force, for they were afraid of being stoned by the people. And when they had brought them, they sent them before the council, set them before the council. And the high priest questioned them, saying, We strictly charged you not to teach in this name. Yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you intend to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles, apostles answered, We must obey God rather than men. Here endeth our lesson for today. Please stand now uh, as we recite Psalm 111, and that's found on page 482 in the Book of Common Prayer. And in your worship insert folder, let us say the psalm responsively by half verse, breaking at the asterisk. I will give thanks unto the Lord with all my heart. Secretly among the faithful and in the congregation. The works of the Lord are great. Sought out of all them that have pleasure therein. His work is worthy to be praised and had in honor. And His righteousness endureth forever. The merciful and gracious Lord hath so done His marvelous works. That they ought to be had in remembrance. He hath given meat unto them that fear Him. He shall be ever mindful of His covenant. He hath showed His people the power of His works. That He may give them the inheritance of the The works of His hands are verity and judgment. All His commandments are true. They stand fast forever and ever. And are done in truth and equity. He sent redemption unto his, unto his people. He hath commanded his covenant forever. Holy and reverend is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do thereafter. His praise endureth forever. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it As was, was in the beginning, beginning is, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Please be seated. 
Our epistle is written in the first chapter of the book of Revelation, beginning at the ninth verse. I, John, your brother and partner in the tribulation and the kingdom, and the patient endurance that are in Jesus, was on the island of Patmos on account of the word of God and testimony of Jesus. I was in the spirit of the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet saying, Write what you see in a book, and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus, and to Smyrna, and to Pergamum, and to Thyatria, and to Sardis, and to Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. Then I turned to see the voice that was speaking to me, and on turning I saw seven golden lampstands. And in the midst of the lampstands, one like a son of man, clothed with a long robe and with a golden sash around his chest. The hairs of his head were white, like white wool, like snow. His eyes were like a flame of fire. His feet were like burnished bronze, re refined in a furnace. And his voice was like the roar of many waters. In his right hand, he held seven stars. From his mouth came a sharp, two-edged sword, and his face was like the sun, shining in full strength. When I saw him, I fell at his feet, though dead. But he laid his right hand on me, saying, Fear not, I am the first and the last, and the living one. I died, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I have the keys of death and Hades. Write therefore the things that you have seen. Those that, are, those that are and those that are to take place after this. As for the mystery of the seven stars that you saw in my right hand and the seven golden lampstands, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches and the seven lampstands are the seven churches. Here endeth the epistle. Please stand, if you will, for the reading of the gospel. Holy Gospel is written in the 20th chapter of John, beginning at the 19th verse. Glory On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and placed my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your fingers here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. And Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe 
that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to thee, Lord. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again in glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is faith by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated and take a moment of silence to reflect upon the gospel and the creed and to prepare your hearts for the preaching of God's word. Amen. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be all acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. And you have a a sheet in your handout, um, your folder, which explains this sermon is actually from the Book of Homilies. It's an edited version from the, um, the homily on, on the resurrection. And so just as a foreknowledge of that, um, but uh, there's a few notes in there about uh, a few of the themes to pay attention for. Let us begin. If ever the greatness or excellency of any matter, spiritual or temporal, has stirred up your minds to listen, good Christian people, I do not doubt that you will now be most diligent hearers of the matter which I have to open to you. For I come to declare that great and most comfortable article of our Christian religion and faith, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus. So great is the matter of this article, and of so great weight and importance, that it was thought worthy to keep our Savior on the earth Forty days after he was risen from death to life, to the confirmation and establishment of it in the hearts of his disciples. He conversed with his disciples for forty days continually together, so that he would, in his person, being now glorified, teach and instruct them who would be the teachers of others, fully and perfectly the truth of this most Christian article, which is the ground and foundation of our whole religion, before he would ascend up to his Father in heaven there to receive the glory of his most triumphant conquest and victory. Assuredly, so highly comfortable is this article to our consciences that it is the very lock and key of all our Christian religion and faith. If it were not true, said the holy apostle Paul, that Christ rose again, then our preaching were in vain. Your faith, which you have received, were but void. You were yet in the danger of your sins. If Christ be not risen again, said the apostle, 
Then are they in very evil case and utterly perished that be entered their sleep in Christ. Then are we the most miserable of all men, which have our hope fixed in Christ, if he be yet under the power of death and as yet not restored to his bliss again. But now is he risen again from death, said the Apostle Paul, to be the first fruits of them that be asleep, to raise them to everlasting life again. Yea, if it were not true that Christ is risen again, then were it neither true that he ascended up into heaven, nor that he set, sent down from heaven unto us the Holy Ghost, nor that he sits in the right hand of his heavenly Father, having the rule of heaven and earth, nor that he should after this world be the judge, as well of the living as of the dead, to give reward to the good and judgment to the evil. That these links, therefore, of our faith should all hang together in steadfast establishment and confirmation, it pleased our Savior not immediately to withdraw himself from the bodily presence and sight of his disciples. But he chose forty days wherein he would declare unto them that he conquered death and that he was also truly risen again to life. He began, said Luke, at Moses and all the prophets and expounded unto them the prophecies that were written in all the scriptures of him to confirm the truth of his resurrection, long spoken before, which he verified by his appearance to different persons at different times. First he sent his angels to the tomb, and which showed to certain women the empty grave. After this, Jesus himself appeared to Mary Magdalene, and afterward he appeared to Peter and then to the two disciples, which were going to Emmaus. He appeared to the disciples also, as they were gathered together for fear of the Jews, the doors shut. At another time, he was seen of the Sea of Tiberias, of Peter and Thomas, and of other disciples when they were fishing. He was seen by more than 500 brothers in the Mount of Galilee. After this, he appeared to James. And last of all, he was visibly seen by all the apostles when he was taken up into heaven. Thus, at different times, he showed himself after he was risen again to confirm and establish this article. And in these revelations, sometimes he showed them to his hands, his feet, and his side, and urged them to touch him, that they should t not take him for a ghost. Sometimes he also ate with them, but ever he was talking with them of the everlasting kingdom of God to, the, to assure the truth of his resurrection. You see, good Christian people, how necessary this article of our faith is, seeing it was proved of Christ himself. Now, therefore, as our Savior was diligent for our comfort and instruction to declare it, so let us be ready in our belief to receive it to our comfort and instruction. As he did not die for himself, no more did he rise again for himself. He was dead, said St. Paul, for our sins and rose again for our justification. O most comfortable word, evermore to be born in remembrance. He died to put away sin. He rose again to endow us with righteousness. His death was a ransom of sin. His death destroyed death and overcame the devil, which had the power of death in subjection. His death destroyed hell with all the damnation thereof. Thus is death swallowed up by Christ's victory. Thus is hell spoiled forever. If any man doubt of this victory, let Christ's glorious resurrection declare it to him. If death could not keep Christ under his dominion and power, but that he rose again, it is clear that his power was overcome. If death is conquered, then it must follow that sin, for which death was appointed as the wages, must also be destroyed. If death and sin are vanished away, then is the devil's tyranny vanquished, who had the power of death, and was the author and brewer of sin. If Christ had the victory over them all by the power of his death, and openly proved it by his most victorious resurrection, as it was not possible for his great might to be subdued by them, and that Christ died for our sins and rose again for our justification, why may not we, that be as members of true faith, rejoice and boldly say with the prophet Hosea and the apostle Paul, Where is thy dart, O death? Where is thy victory, O hell? Thanks be unto God, say they, which hath given us the victory by our Lord Jesus Christ. This mighty conquest of his resurrection 
was not only signified before by the figures of the Old Testament, as when Samson, as by Samson when he slew the lion, out of whose mouth came sweetness and honey, and as David bare his figure when he delivered the lamb out of the lion's mouth, and when he overcame and slew the great giant Goliath, and as when Jonah was swallowed up by the whale's mouth and cast up again on land to live, but was also most clearly prophesied by the prophets of the Old Testament and in the New also confirmed by the apostles. This is the mighty power of the Lord whom we believe in. By his death has he wrought for us this victory, and by his resurrection has he purchased everlasting life and righteousness for us. It had not been enough to be delivered by his death from sin, except by his resurrection we had been endowed with righteousness. And it should not avail to us to be delivered from death, except he had risen again to open for us the gates of heaven, to enter into life everlasting. Thus has his resurrection wrought for us life and righteousness. He passed through death and hell to put us in good righteousness, or to put us in good hope that by his strength we shall do the same. He paid the ransom of sin that it should not be laid to our charge. He destroyed the devil and all his tyranny and openly triumphed over him and took away from him all his captives and has raised and set them with himself among the heavenly citizens above. He died to destroy the rule of the devil in us and he arose again to send down his Holy Spirit to rule in our hearts to endow us with perfect righteousness. Delight in this article of your faith that Christ is risen again from death to life and then follow the example of his resurrection as St. Paul exhorts us, saying, As we be buried with Christ by our baptism into death, so let us daily die to sin, mortifying and killing the evil desires and motions thereof. And as Christ was raised up from death by the glory of the Father, so let us rise to a new life and walk continually therein, that we may likewise, as natural children, live a way of life to move men to glorify our Father which is in heaven. If then we be risen with Christ by our faith to the hope of everlasting life, let us also rise with Christ after his example to a new life and leave our old. We shall then be truly risen if we seek for things that be heavenly, if we have our affection upon the things that be above and not on things that be on earth. If you desire to know what earthly things you should put off and what heavenly things above that you should seek, St. Paul in, his, in the epistle to the Colossians declares when he exhorts us thus, Mortify your, desire, your earthly members and old affections of sin as fornication, uncleanness, unnatural lust, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is the worshiping of idols, for which things the wrath of God is wont to fall on the children of unbelief, in which things once ye walked when ye lived in them. But now put ye also away from you wrath, fierceness, maliciousness, cursed speaking, filthy speaking, out of your mouths. Lie not to one another, that the old man with his works be put off, and the new put on. These are the earthly things which St. Paul moves you to cast from you and to pluck your hearts from them. For in following these, you declare yourselves earthly and worldly. These be the fruits of the earthly Adam. These should you daily kill by good diligence in withstanding the desires of them, that you might rise to righteousness. Let your affection from henceforth be set on heavenly things. Search for mercy, kindness, meekness, patience, forbearing one another and forgiving one another, if any man have any quarrel to another. And as Christ forgave you, even so do ye. If these and other such heavenly virtues you pursue in the rest of your life, you shall, plainly show, you shall show plainly that ye be risen with Christ and that you are the heavenly children of your Father in heaven, from whom, as from the giver, these graces come down. You shall prove by this manner that your conversation is in heaven, where your hope is, and not on earth, following the beastly appetites of the flesh. You must consider that therefore that you are therefore cleansed and renewed, that you should from henceforth serve God in holiness and righteousness all the days of your lives, that you may reign with him in everlasting life. 
if you refuse so great grace, to which you are called, what other thing do you do than heap up your damnation more and more? And so provoke God to cast his displeasure on you and to revenge this mockery of his holy sacraments in so great abusing of them. Apply yourselves, good friends, to live in Christ, that Christ may still live in you, whose favor and assistance, if you have, then have you everlasting life already within you, and, and then can nothing hurt you. Whatsoever has been done and committed, Christ has offered you pardon and clearly received you to his favor again. In full surety whereof, you have him now inhabiting and dwelling within you. Only show yourselves thankful in your lives. Determine with yourselves to refuse and avoid all such things in your ways of life as should offend his eyes of mercy. Endeavor yourselves to rise up again by the same way which you fell into the pit of sin. If by your tongue you have offended, now thereby rise again and glorify God with it. Accustom it to laud and praise the name of God as you have dishonored the name with it. And as you have hurt the name of your neighbor or otherwise hindered him, so now intend to restore it to him again. For without restitution, God does not accept your confession, nor yet your repentance. It is not enough to forsake evil, except that you set your courage to do good. By what occasion soever you have offended, turn now the occasion to the honoring of God and profiting of your neighbor. It is true that sin is strong and, infection, and affections unruly. It is hard to subdue and resist our nature, so corrupt and leavened with the sour bitterness of the poison which we received by the inheritance of our father, Adam. But yet take good courage, said our Savior Christ, for I have overcome the world and all other enemies for you. Sin shall not have power over you, for ye be now under grace, said St. Paul. Though your, ba- though your power be weak, yet Christ is risen again to strengthen you in your battle. His Holy Spirit shall help your infirmities. In trust of his mercy, commit to purge this old leaven of sin that corrupts the sweetness of your life before God, that ye may be as new and fresh dough, void of all, the sour, of all sour leaven of wickedness. So shall you show yourself to be sweet bread to God, that he may have his delight in you. I say kill and offer up the worldly and earthly affections of your bodies. For Christ, our Easter lamb, is offered up for us to slay the power of sin, to deliver us from the danger thereof, and to give us example to die to sin in our life. As the Jews did eat their Easter lamb and keep their feast in remembrance of their deliverance out of Egypt, so let us, even so, let us keep our Easter feast and the thankful remembrance of Christ's benefits, which he has plentifully wrought for us by his resurrection and ascension to his Father whereby we are delivered from the captivity of all our enemies. Let us in like manner pass over the affections of of our old way of life, that we may be delivered from the bondage of it and rise with Christ. The Jews kept their feasts in abstaining from leavened bread by the space of seven days. Let us, Christian folk, keep our holy day in spiritual manner, that is, in abstaining not from material leavened bread, but from the old leaven of sin, the leaven of maliciousness and wickedness. Let us cast from us the leaven of corrupt doctrine that will infect our souls. Let us keep our feast the whole term of our life with, the eating, with eating the bread of pureness of godly life and truth of Christ's doctrine. Thus shall we declare that Christ's gifts and graces have their effect in us and that we have the right belief and knowledge of his holy resurrection, where truly if we apply our faith to the virtue of it, and in our life conform us to the example and signification meant by it, we shall be sure to rise hereafter to everlasting glory with, by the goodness and mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom with the Father and the Holy Ghost be all glory, thanksgiving, and praise, world without end. Amen.
God is not unrighteous that he will forget your works and labor that proceedeth of love, which love ye have showed for his name's sake, who have ministered unto the saints and yet do minister. Remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Please stand. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For all that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all. These prayers are said for the unity and holiness of Christ's church, for all bishops, priests, deacons, other ministers, and those discerning the ministry, for bishops Lipka, Ilgen, Fritz, and Beach, priests Kyle, Don, and Michael, and deacons Curtis, for the Anglican Church in North America, the Missionary Diocese of All Saints, and the Convocation of the West, for Father Gabe Smith and the Church of the Resurrection in Sherman, Texas, for all those in authority, Joseph, our president, and Greg, our governor. For our community, Bernie. For St. John's, that she may be a light of the gospel in our community. For the ministries and missions we support, the Gratitude School, the Trinity Mission, and the Hill Country Pregnancy Care Center. For those who need the comfort of the gospel and the grace of our Lord, that they would find St. John's. For all children, born and unborn, for those in sickness and in need, the citizens of Ukraine, the soldiers and their families on both sides of the conflict, Bob, Jacinda, Jim, and Shirley, the McVeigh family, Carol Thomas, Elba, Lindsay, Nolan, and Heather, Cindy, DJ, Becky, and family, Tom, Catherine, and Mary, Daryl, Shannon, Eric, the Tompkins family, Kurt, Ava, and Jacob, Daryl, and Shannon, Finley, and Mary Lou. And we give thanks for St. John's Anglican Church. For those unspoken prayers in the minds and hearts of the people of St. John's and for the departed.
Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church. Almighty and everlasting God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications, and to give us thanks for all, give thanks for all men. We humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations, and to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty. We beseech thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in that truth thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also, so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers, that they may truly and impartially minister justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of the true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, that they may, both for life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly minister thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. We also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual, lo- continual growth in thy love and service, and to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of the heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Ye who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God, devoutly kneeling. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who with great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto Him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all who truly turn to Him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul saith, This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Lift up your hearts. We lift up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God, 
Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, All glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou, the tender mercy, didst give an only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and at institute, and in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. From the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, o Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we that humble servants do celebrate. And make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee. The memorial thy son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. I most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify. With thy word and Holy Spirit, these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, holy institution, in remembrance, in, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, mercy would accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all the whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. Humbly beseeching thee, that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ our Lord by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as the Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Behold, Lamb of God, behold him who taketh away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. remembrance of Christ through your shed blood. the image of Christ by faith, and feed on him thy heart by faith and thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost vouchsafe to feed us who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food and most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are members in corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the most blessed company of all faithful people. And are also heirs to the hope of thy everlasting kingdom. By the merits of his most precious death and passion, and we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. If you'll please stand and join with us in singing the Gloria. Please kneel for the benediction. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and may be with you always. Amen. If you please stand and join us in singing hymn number 90.
You may be seated. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to be with you all on this, this fine Sunday morning. Um, I want to first thank you all for your prayers. We had a, a wonderful week at the, uh, out in New Mexico for the Synod and Convocation, or the Clericus. Um, it was a wonderful time of, uh, of rest for myself and uh, I'm sure for uh, Father Don and Ruth and Mitch as well as we got to um, uh, fellowship with our uh, fellow clergymen from around the Convocation and um, just get our hearts and minds reoriented to uh, the mission of the convocation. And so it was a, a, a wonderful time to pray together, to worship together, and uh, lots of eating together. Um, and uh, so thank you all for that, and thank you for your prayers for our families who were here. And um, they made it. They're still, we still have four children, so that's always a blessing. And, uh, um, but uh, we had a... Uh, Got home, we had a couple, past couple uh, days, we had a lot of fun uh, doing stuff together as a family, just catching up after uh, um, a few days off there. So uh, again, thank you for that time. Um, then for um, just a few announcements, um, did we, Doug, do you remember, did we decide on the first or we push it back to the eighth? I, th- I, th- I thought we had pushed it back to the eighth. Um, so... The vestry meeting will not be next week. It'll be the week after on the 8th. Uh, and so um, for those in the vestry here, uh, take note of that. Um, and then um, this week we'll be doing, resuming uh, morning evening prayer, morning prayer at 7 a.m. and then evening prayer at 4 p.m. Monday through Thursday. And then next Sunday we'll begin uh, morning prayer at 9 a.m. Uh, And so please come and join us at 9 a.m. next Sunday for morning prayer as well. Um, Then um, there is a um, refreshment sign-up sheet next door um, for the uh, fellowship times. Uh, Please uh, look at that. Consider when you can maybe help bring some stuff for for fellowship and uh, sign up for that. If you have any questions, see Donna or Sandy. Uh, and then l- lastly, uh, well, two lastlies. Um, first, lilies. Uh, this is the last Sunday that we'll be using lilies um, here in the, in the services. Uh, so if you wish to take one home with you, if you uh, gave one in, um, in remembrance of someone or if you just wish to have one in any, any ways, um, please uh, uh, take one home with you um, this afternoon and uh, we'll... Uh, uh, they're, they're available and free to anyone who would like one, um, or more than one, I would assume. Um, so I'm sure we have enough to, to go around for everyone here if we needed to. Um, and then uh, lastly, lastly, uh, this week, um, today was going to be uh, Bob and Sylvia's last Sunday here. Um, they were unable to make it for a number of reasons at home. Um, but uh, they are heading out on Tuesday, or the Wednesday. Wednesday. So the truck comes on Tuesday for packing, or is that different? Pack on Monday, Tuesday. Pack Monday, Tuesday. Move on Wednesday. Pack Monday, Tuesday, move on Wednesday. Um, but here at the beginning of this week, they will be uh, preparing to go packing and then uh, moving up there uh, to the Dallas area. Uh, so please keep them in your prayers. Um, especially Bob in this uh, time of transition, uh, and, um, uh, and then Sylvia. and um, that They need our prayers during this time of transition. It'll be, a, it'll be a tough time, but I think it'll ultimately be really good for them, even as we, uh, we will miss them here. Uh, to that end, I wish to, uh, uh, to say a prayer for them. So uh, let us pray. Dear Lord, we lift up your servants, Bob and Sylvia, to you, that you would um, give them comfort and peace in this time of of change and uh, transition and turmoil and busyness. Um, Lord, we ask that you would um, soothe Bob's mind, that you would allow him to, um, at the very least, not be uh, too... um, 
frightened or consternated by uh, the, the move and the, the, the change, uh, and that uh, you would give, uh, give him peace and give Sylvia peace, Lord, as she's trying to take care of Bob and uh, prepare all of the uh, stuff for moving at, the, at this time as well. Uh, Lord, we ask also for uh, their, their children who will be helping support them in this, uh, that you would, uh, you would use this move to uh, give them a time of rest in their lives, Lord, um, that you would, uh, you would use this time to uh, strengthen them, that you would use this time to draw them ever closer to you, ever closer together, and that, um, that all who see them would look on them and praise your name. Lord, we thank you for the blessing that you've given to St. John's and to all of us in Bob and Sylvia for uh, their faithfulness, their, um, their joy, and uh, the, uh, the delight that they, that they bring to, uh, to St. John's, uh, the, the things they've done for, uh, provided for the children, uh, among other things. Lord, we ask that you would uh, find ways to fill the... Uh, the void left by them here, that you would bring uh, new people with new gifts uh, to St. John's and that uh, we would um, be able to uh, here move forward um, thanking you for the blessing you've given to, given to us through uh, Bob and Sylvia, but also um, looking forward to where you would have us go as well. And it's in your blessed name, name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, we pray these things. Amen. Yes, Ruth. There's a card. There's yes, a thank you. For those that you would stop and please sign your name or a little greeting for them and like this and a gift as well. Yeah, there's a ra- it's on the round table in there, correct? Uh, so please come and uh, sign the, uh, the note for Bob and Sylvia. Um, leave a little note or um, just sign your name and just let them know that you're thinking of them during this time. Um, and... Besides that, come and join us over here for fellowship in the fellowship hall next door, and uh, uh, let us uh, go forth uh, this week to uh, love and serve the Lord. Amen. Oh, in peace. Remember the poor with steadfast faith and kindled affection. Love one another and may the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen.